Hi, my name is Peter Vogel, and today we're going to look at how to jazz up a common chord progression in D. We'll use several chord substitution tricks. Let's get started by looking at the chord progression we're going to jazz up. Okay, so we're playing this chord progression. It's a D major chord. It's a straight up D major going to a G major chord. Four finger G major. When I do this change, my third finger staying still and I'm going to, to G. I'm then going to E minor. And my first finger stayed still going there. Then to A7. Second finger stays still there. And now I'm going back to D via a guide finger. Third finger on the second string slides up and I make my D major chord. So it's D, G, E minor, A7, and D. Don't worry too much about the strum pattern here. I'm just doing down strokes because all we're really talking about is using some chord substitutions to jazz this thing up. But this is our basic chord progression. It's a D chord, that's our one chord in the key of D. A G major chord, that's our four chord in the key of D. E minor, that's our two chord. A7, that's our five chord. And back to D. So we have a one, four, two, five, one chord progression. Now here's the chord progression with the substitutions. Okay, so this time through, I think you can hear the difference, we're going to do a D major 7th for our D major chord. And to do that, I'm just putting my first finger all the way across the first three strings and strumming from the fourth string down. So rule number one for a chord substitution is you can generally substitute a major seventh chord for a major chord. So instead of D, we got D major seven. Our second chord was G, we're going to use G six nine. This is another substitution we can do. We can substitute a six nine chord for a major chord. So to make this chord, I've got my second finger up on the sixth string third fret. I've got my third finger down here on the second string third fret and my first finger is barring across the fourth and third string. Only other tricky part to this is I am intentionally muting the fifth string, that's with my second finger, and I'm intentionally muting the first string, that's with my first finger, and possibly my third. So it's a G6-9, it's a real cool sound for a major chord. The next thing we have is E minor seventh. We can finger this a number of ways. In this case, I've gone ahead and lifted up my third finger and I'm putting my pinky down here on the second string, third fret, and then just a regular E minor, first finger on the second fret, fifth string, second finger on the fourth string, second fret, strumming all the strings. So this rule is that for any minor chord, we can substitute a minor seventh chord. Now, of course, all these are generally we can do this. This is to your taste and musically what's going on. So E minor seventh instead of E minor. The last chord, instead of A7, I have an A chord with a, a, a flat 9. That's called an altered chord. So uh, essentially it's an A7 with a flat 9. If I add my pinky to it, it's even more so an A7 with a flat 9. We could even call it a diminished chord. In this case, I like this voicing of it, just playing down to the second string. So my first finger is on the second uh, fret fourth string. My third finger is on the third string third fret. That's my flat 9 and my second finger uh, right down here on the second string, second fret. So once again, first finger here, third finger here, second finger here. So hopefully that's clear. And let me just say this, for any dominant seventh chord, and we're actually gonna clarify this for what we call a functioning dominant seventh, and all that means is it's a seven chord, like A7, D7, E7, not major seven. If it's coming back to the first chord, in other words, back to D, that's what we call a functioning dominant seventh chord, we can substitute an altered chord. An 
all an altered chord is, it's a seventh chord with a flat nine, a sharp nine, a flat five, or a sharp five. Sounds really complicated, but that doesn't mean it's hard to play. It's just theoretically maybe a, a, di a difficult concept if you don't know music theory too well. So you might need to study up on that if that's causing you some grief right now. So once again, it's D major seventh, G six nine, E minor seventh, A seven with a flat nine beautiful little chord progression and coming back to the one chord. These chord change devices can really prove handy if you know how to use them. If the theory is leaving you dizzy, just learn how to make the chords change smoothly. If you understand the theory, you can apply it to any chord progression you like. I highly encourage you to learn music theory so you can do this. Let's hear both progressions once again. So that's our basic chord progression, D, G, E minor, A7, back to D. And then we change it to our jazzier chord progression. Hopefully this lesson is helping you enjoy playing guitar more and helping you improve. If you find yourself wanting more direct help, I'm now offering private online video lessons using iChat or Skype. It's affordable, you don't have to leave your house, and you can record your lessons to refer back to. If this sounds interesting to you, look me up on freeguitarvideos.com or the petervogel.com website, and you can email me. You can also find me on Facebook, just make sure you spell Vogel, V-O-G-L. I look forward to working with you. Well, that's it for this lesson. For more comprehensive lessons on this topic, check out my premium downloadable lessons at freeguitarvideos.com. My name is Peter Vogel, and I will see you again soon.